So we're told to find the potential for the configuration that we're given. So once again, using spherical coordinates, we start with this step. So by using separation of variables, we know that our answer has to look something like this. And then by considering some of the boundary conditions, we can come to simplify our solution. So this is the configuration that we have. We have a disk with a radius of r. And then we're told to find, in part a, the potential so, uh, where the small r is larger than the radius of the disk. So you can imagine kind of like having a hypothetical sphere wrap around this disk. So we're considering the potential outside of this hypothetical sphere. So in the region outside of the sphere. So when small r is a big, bigger than big r. So uh, immediately you can notice when small r hits all the way to infinity, this whole thing has to be equal to zero, right? So this term has to be equal to zero. All the a's must be equal to zero. So we've obtained our first simplification. So our potential has to look something like this. And then next we're given that when theta is equal to zero, so like on the axis, on the z-axis, so this is x, y, z on the z-axis, when theta is equal to zero, we're given that the potential is equal to this expression, which we found in the previous chapter. So let's just copy that down. So this is equal to this expression when we substitute theta equal to zero. So when we substitute theta equal to zero, cosine zero is equal to one. And then we're told that for the Legendre polynomials, when the argument is equal to one, the output is equal to one. So in this case, we know that uh, the Legendre polynomial here is equal to one, so we can just omit that. So that, using this, we can actually find what BL is. So let's do just that. So let's just summarize what we have just now. So we know that this expression is equal to this expression that we've obtained in the previous chapter. So let's try to pull the small r out. So 1 plus r over r squared minus 1. And now I'm going to use a Taylor series expansion. So if, say, I have a function y equals the square root of 1 plus x, you can go online to look this up, or you can apply the formula yourself. But eventually, you will obtain an expression that looks something like this. So I'm not going to prove how you get this. So actually, we only need three terms, because the question only requires us to find the first three terms. So we're only going to use these three. So I'm going to apply this formula to right here. So maybe I shouldn't use equal, I should right is approximately equal to. So our, uh, big R over small r squared is going to be our x. So we get a big R over small r squared, 1 over 2 and then minus big R over small r. So our argument is already a square, and there's another square over here, so that's going to be a power of 4, 1 over 8. And then for the rest of the terms, we're going to omit those because the question doesn't require us to find those, so that's why we have an approximate sign here. So uh, thankfully the ones, they cancel out. So I'm going to put the r back inside. So we're going to r squared 2r minus r to the fourth, eight r to the power of three. So now we can compare the terms. We can compare this with this. So you see that we need to find the fir uh, for, uh, first three terms, right? So we want to find b0, b1, and b2. So let's start with b0. So b0. So b0 for the uh, denominator is r to the power of one. And you see that for r to the power of one, the constant is equal to sigma r squared divided by 4 epsilon. So don't forget that's a 2 here, and the 2 is a 4 epsilon. So for b1, b1 is when the denominator is r squared, but we have no r squared term. So b1 has to be equal to 0. And then for b2, the denominator is r to the power of 3, and then comparing the constants, we get negative r to the power of 4 divided by, so there's an 8, there's a 2, so 16 epsilon. So this is the answer. These are the first three terms.